Airbus has stunned the aviation world by unexpectedly revealing plans to develop an entirely new aircraft, a bold move that could reshape the industry in the coming decade. Amid constantly shifting market demands and rapidly advancing technology, this move is seen as a decisive step towards setting new standards for the next generation of aviation. But why could this new aircraft change the industry, and how exactly will it achieve that? Let's find out. Since entering the aviation market, Airbus has continuously expanded its product lineup, from the compact A220 to the giant A380, catering to every need, from short haul to long haul, from narrow body to wide body aircraft. Now, the company is preparing for a major leap in engine technology. Airbus has confirmed that it is working with Rolls-Royce to explore ways to improve fuel efficiency for the next generation of narrow body aircraft. At the same time, Rolls-Royce is developing a smaller version of its ultrafan engine, signaling a serious return to the narrow body market. CEO Tufan Ergen Bilgik revealed at the Farnborough Air Show that the company had already started discussions with aircraft manufacturers about this new engine technology, an unexpected shift from the cautious stance he shared just a year ago at the Paris Air Show. At the same event, Airbus's chief sustainability officer, Julie Kitcher, said each new generation of aircraft brings about a 25% improvement in fuel efficiency, thanks to advancements in both materials and engines. She emphasized that Airbus strives to stay one technological step ahead and is already equipped with the latest generation technologies. But Airbus isn't stopping at Sustainable Aviation Fuel, SAF. It is aiming even higher with commercial aircraft powered by hydrogen. The CEO stated that SAF and hydrogen technologies would complement each other on the path to decarbonization. To bring that vision to life, Airbus launched the Zero-E program, which includes four experimental aircraft, from turbofan to blended wing body, all powered by hydrogen. The company is targeting 2035 to introduce the world's first hydrogen-powered commercial aircraft. In parallel, Airbus is exploring both hydrogen fuel cell and direct hydrogen combustion propulsion systems. Several dedicated development centers have been set up across Europe, and the A380 MSN1 has been designated as the flying testbed for these breakthrough technologies. But what would an aircraft with such a completely new design actually look like? First, Airbus is rewriting the standards of aviation design with a bold leap, a revolutionary wing concept based on the blended wing body configuration where the fuselage and wings are no longer separate but seamlessly merged into one continuous aerodynamic form. This isn't just a cosmetic upgrade, it's an aerodynamic revolution. By significantly reducing drag, the BWB design enhances fuel efficiency and extends flight range, introducing a radically new silhouette to the skies of the future. Beyond its striking appearance, this design also hides a major technological breakthrough, the integration of a hybrid electric propulsion system. The aircraft's wings are no longer just for lift, they now serve as hydrogen fuel storage hubs, dealing with one of aviation's most challenging fuels. Thanks to clever engineering, the wings of Airbus's Zero-E can safely and efficiently house hydrogen tanks, powering a hybrid system that combines traditional jet engines with electric motors driven by hydrogen fuel cells. Second, non-stop there, what makes this even more exceptional is how Airbus merges such cutting-edge design with materials of the future. To bring the clean-flying dream to life, materials must be not only lightweight and durable, but also environmentally friendly. Airbus is leading the charge in developing next-generation materials from advanced metals and composites to specialized coatings, all geared toward multifunctionality and minimizing environmental impact. This forward-thinking material strategy doesn't just reduce resource use and waste throughout a product's life cycle. It also enables predictive maintenance, enhances performance, and streamlines manufacturing. When materials can do it all, from insulation and conductivity to self-monitoring, aircraft become more efficient and air travel becomes more sustainable than ever before. With the BWB wing, hybrid propulsion, and future-ready materials, Airbus isn't just building another plane, they're reinventing the future of flight. However, developing an entirely new aircraft is extremely challenging. The process can take more than a decade. To address this, there is a solution. 
Airbus might consider a less risky option, developing a new aircraft based on an existing version already in use on the market. Have you ever heard? We are talking about the A350-2000. When it was first introduced, many in the industry believed this version would help solve the issue of passenger capacity. Discussions about the A350 stretch began in the mid-2010s, when the A350 started to demonstrate its strength. The 2000 variant, with a fuselage extended from the current A350-1000, was expected to be a major success. It was projected to be about 4 meters longer and thus carry 40 to 50 more passengers than the 1000. This would bring its capacity into a more competitive range and serve as a distinguishing feature that some customers might want. Furthermore, the added weight would still fall within the maximum takeoff weight of the A350-1000. Therefore, theoretically, it could use the same Rolls-Royce XWB engines if Airbus were to proceed with this program. While the Variant 2000 was originally intended to replace the A380, when the Super Jumbo reached the end of production, there are still many debates surrounding its true capabilities. The first concern is size. The A380 is the largest commercial aircraft ever built, designed to carry over 800 passengers in a high-density configuration. Even if Airbus develops the Variant 2000, it would likely be significantly smaller than the Super Jumbo. And regarding to the market segment, the A380, the king of the skies, was primarily designed for ultra-long-haul flights between major aviation hubs. Its massive capacity made it ideal for linking densely populated cities. The A350, even in a stretched version, may not have the same appeal on these specific routes. However, if developed, the A350-2000 could fill a different niche in the market. It could be positioned as a more efficient and flexible alternative to the A380, still suitable for long-haul routes, but with a slightly lower capacity. This might make it attractive to airlines that require a large aircraft, but don't need the extreme capacity of the Super Jumbo. Ultimately, the development of the A350-2000 will depend on many factors, including market demand, technological feasibility, and economic considerations. So far, Airbus has not shown any signs of formally launching this project. We consider the 1000 large enough. If you look at the replacement of the 777-300ER in the coming years, the 1000 is the perfect size, offering longer range and far better efficiency. So this is the natural platform. This is where we see the market going in the next three years, said Florent Massou de Labacare, head of the Airbus Widebody Program. Moreover, the Variant 1000 can carry up to 440 passengers in a high-density configuration. That is a very high passenger count for a commercial aircraft, more than enough to meet the needs of many airlines. Its range also reaches up to 15,700 kilometers about 9,750 miles, allowing it to fly non-stop to nearly any destination in the world. It is also equipped with new generation engines that are more fuel efficient than older generations. Airbus has said it is not currently considering the development of the A350-2000. However, the company has not ruled out the possibility of launching this version in the future if market conditions change. However, considering the pros and cons of developing a new aircraft, do you think Airbus should develop an entirely new Zero-E aircraft or the stretched A350-2000 version? Let us know your answer. Thanks for being here, and see you next time.